upon recommendation of the Business Conduct Committee, the firm of Kane and Company has been suspended from this exchange. Well, they started. Come in. You want it on the telephone, Mr. Kane. Who is it? It's the district attorney's officer. I'd better take it. Hello. No, this is McGarkin's attorney. Oh, I see. Yes, he'll be here. The grand jury swore out an indictment for embezzlement. They're in a hurry, aren't they? Now we'll have to put some pressure on the district attorney. He wouldn't do any good. This is election year. Yeah, that's right. He'll crucify me. Well, that's an idea. Maybe we can turn this thing around. Make it look like uh, political persecution. They wouldn't fall for it. If he's got the evidence, I think... Well, he's got it, hasn't he? Otherwise, I wouldn't be indicted. Well, they never sent a millionaire to prison as long as I can remember. Where have you been for the last couple of years? Come in. Your car is ready, Mr. Kane. Car? To take you to the regatta, sir. Oh. Oh. Well, that's right. Bob is rowing today. I'd forgotten about him. I mustn't let him hear anything about this from strangers. Come on, we'll drive out there. But I told the district attorney you'll be here. Let the district attorney wait. Mr. Kane? Yes, I'm Mr. Kane. Oh, he's my attorney. Mr. Kane, uh, do I go with you or do you ride with me? There's no chance of postponing this until tomorrow. Sorry, Mr. Kane. Then I ride with you. You take my car, you get Bob and bring him back here. What about the bail? I'll arrange that. Telephone me at the, um... County jail. County jail. Go ahead. Uh, I'm ready, officer. This isn't funny, Mr. Kane. You're telling me? important I wanted to tell you. Your father's in a jam. He wanted to get up here himself, but couldn't get away. Now you understand the papers are making far too much of this. There it is. school. I wouldn't tonight. It's pretty much broken up. Thanks, Jim. I'll call you the first thing in the morning. All right. Good night. Good night.
Bob. You shouldn't have left school. Why not? You shouldn't have run away. I suppose I should just sit in class and be Exhibit A, instead of that skeleton they have hanging on the wall. All my friends being extra nice to me just to show how broad-minded they are. You'll have to learn to take it. Why should I take it for something I didn't do? Oh, come, Bob. You're making this thing much too important. Oh, it isn't important, huh? Look, I sold securities belonging to some customers of the firm. It's not the first time that's been done. Are you trying to tell me that this is the usual thing? We're in a tough game. We've got to be as tough as the other fellow or get out. You'll find it out for yourself when you're making your way in the world. I suppose I that guess you... I was just dumb enough to believe what was taught me. To live by a code. What? The athletic code? Why, every time you ran down the field for a touchdown, you had one of the best teams blocking for you that money could buy. Codes are for suckers. It's the same in business. There's only one rule. Eat or be eaten. This is a swell way to find it out. Well, I thought you knew. Take a look at yourself. What have I got to do with it? Well, suppose I let people push me around. Where would you be today? Out looking for a job. Or maybe on relief. Or perhaps with these fellows that walk up and down on picket lines, striking for something that they'll never get. Well, maybe they're better off than I am. Oh, come, Bob. Wake up. Use your head. I am. I'm thinking way back to this afternoon. Back ten years to that night Mother died. And you and I sat together until dawn. Remember? You talked to me like an equal then, and I felt like one. We swore we'd always be honest with each other. We knew there was a bond between us which never could be broken. It needn't be broken. You broke it when you stopped being honest with me. Why didn't you tell me what you were doing? You made a life for me. Let me go on living it without ever understanding it. If you just said you were skating on thin ice, all right, I, I would have tried to understand, but I wouldn't be in a spot like this. I'm not prepared for it. No, don't. No, and don't tell me I can't take it. Why should I be able to take it when I've had no warning? When out of a clear sky, I, I find that my father's a crook. I hope you didn't mean that. I wish I didn't. Have you said all you're going to? I think so. All right. Now you listen to me. I'm willing to admit that I didn't pay much attention to you, with the exception, of course, that I wanted you to have a fine education and plenty of money and so forth. Probably that wasn't enough. I didn't really think of you until this happened to me. And I wondered what it would mean to you. Today was like a nightmare to me. I was afraid of the moment when I had to face you and explain. I was afraid because... Well, I knew my heart would break if you were forgiving and understanding. But now I know better. The prison term doesn't mean anything to me. I can do that standing on my head. It was you. And now that we found out how we feel about each other, I'll know that I'll never have to give you another thought as long as I live. Is that all? Yes. Please tell me where Mr. Kane is to be sentenced today. General Sessions Court. Judge Penrose. Thank you. Hear me, hear me, hear me. Step aside, please. All persons having business before the court, part one of General Sessions, State of New York, County of New York, step forward and ye shall be heard. The Honorable Mr. Justice Penrose. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning. found you guilty only on a minor charge. It has acquitted you on all the major charges against you because it believed some doubt exists as to your actual guilt. If that doubt exists in the minds of the jury, it never existed in mine or in any of the witnesses. It was put there by the questionable tactics of your counsel and by the scandalous misuse of loopholes in the law. This is a disgraceful verdict. You are an habitual felon with a long and dismal record. All I can do is to give you the maximum sentence permitted me under the law.
You will serve two years in state prison. Thank you, Your Honor. I wish it were 20. For a sentence, Robert Kane. It is disheartening for me to pronounce sentence on a man of your position and background. Your crime is the more serious in that you have misused your high place in our society to betray a sacred trust. You are sentenced to serve from five to ten years in state prison on each of the counts on which we have been found guilty. The sentence is to run concurrently. Court is recessed. Your sentence was Just read your own papers, boys. They've said it all. Well, don't worry, Mr. Kane. We won't bother you anymore. From now on, you're yesterday's news. Thank you. Hey, let's talk about me. I steal an empty slot machine and get ten years. This guy steals a million and gets five. Figure that out, will you? That's why you got the ten, to figure it out. Let's go, let's go. Oh, smart guy, eh? Come on, Step back. Goodbye, Jim. Goodbye, Robert. job, I guess. I'm afraid you might have to. By the time you settled up all the creditors, there'll be nothing left in the estate. Well, if I can do anything for you, let me know. Thanks, Mac. Goodbye. Goodbye. your clothes and personal effects in the dressing room, Mr. Kane. Mr. Kane. 13826 from now on. Name, please. Dugan. Tom. Age? I'll be 58 when I get out. Previous occupation? Thief. Don't worry, I'll get me old job back again. All right, you can go. Name, please? Kane. Robert. Former occupation? Stockbroker. I used to be a customer's man myself. I'm afraid there's no brokerage office in here. Can you do anything else? Mm, I started as a boilermaker. Well, how'd you like to start over again? Not a bad idea. Number one, three, eight, two, six. Boiler shop. 
Connell's in, you didn't have no hands, and I had to dress him every morning. I have an appointment with Mr. Peterson. What was it about? I told you seven times already. My name is Robert Kane, Jr. Mr. Peterson was a great friend of my father's, and I've come to see him about a job. Oh, yes. I wonder if you could possibly come back tomorrow. I've been coming back tomorrow for over a week now. Mr. Peterson is a very busy man. Why don't you give him the real dope? The boss has given you the runaround because of your old man. Thanks, Sonny. Thomas. Thomas. Oh, boss wants to see you. Oh, thanks. Uh... Your real name has just been called to my attention, Mr. Kane. I'm going to let you go. Not because your name is Kane, but because you didn't have the courage to admit it. My father died in jail, an habitual drunkard. But I kept my name because I happened to be proud of it. I'm sorry, sir, but it seemed to me the only thing to do. If you ever need a recommendation, I'll be glad to give you one. Good day. Thank you, sir. Dinner for us in here. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, what's on your mind? A great deal, sir. I haven't seen you for nearly a year now, have I? No. What have you been doing? Well, I spent most of my time looking for a job. I couldn't find one because of my name. So I changed it. Today I was fired for changing it. Well, uh, have you uh, seen this? He was sentenced the same day as my father. Yes, I remember. Well, what I want to know is, if he's out, why is my father still in? Because there are certain methods that no respectable attorney would employ. Why not? If they work, what's wrong with them? It's a question of legal ethics. Oh. You knew what my father was doing before they caught up with him, though, didn't you? Where were your legal ethics then? I don't think I quite like the trend of this conversation. I don't care whether you like it or not. Why aren't you doing something for him? If this shyster Brennan can fix a parole, why can't you? Well, for one thing, it costs money. Oh. A minute ago, you were talking about legal ethics. There's no question of money, though, when he set you up in practice. Since when have you been so interested in getting your father out? You have a lot of time to think when you're walking the streets looking for work. I've come to the conclusion that maybe my old man was right after all. It was all these so-called friends of his who helped me find it out. There isn't one of them who isn't in his debt one way or another. Yet today they're all ashamed to admit they ever knew him. Well, some of them perhaps. And that goes for you too. Now let's forget all about legal ethics. Are you going to help him or aren't you? I've already told you I can't. All right. 
Then if you won't, I'll get somebody who will. for Brennan, too? Mm-hmm. Any idea where he is? Night court. Likes to pick up cases there. Says that people that get arrested at night are more natural. I thought maybe from the milk bottles there, he might be away. Oh, no, he drinks that with his scotch. When he can get the scotch. I thought he had a pretty good business. He did until the Mick went up. Then he spent all his time and money trying to get the Mick paroled. The Mick? Mickey Dwyer. Oh. Do you know him? Know him? Nobody knows him. They say I'm his girl. Oh, must be pretty good, huh? Sometimes. Sometimes it's not so hot. You see this? That's all that stands between me and the WPA. I'm out of a job, too. What do you do? I'm an actress. I used to work at that joint across the street. I should think with your connections with Dwyer that you ought to be able to get a job. That shows that you don't know them, Mick. Every guy in town that owns a joint knows that if they did me any favors, it would only mean one thing to him. He'd blow their head off. That's why I'm starving to death in a mink coat that I wouldn't dare sell. Yeah. Well, I, I see where he got his parole. Yeah, I read that too. Only I don't believe anything the papers say. Figured the judge ought to know. Who? Brennan. Oh. Hey, look. Get a load of the robin. Hmm? Where? On the windowsill. Oh, yeah. First I've seen this spring. You're supposed to make a wish. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Bet yours was about a girl. No. What's your name? Johnny. They call me Lucky. Got a match, Johnny? Mm. Mm. Never go hungry as long as you got that. I'd go hungry before I'd part with it. He's stinking. He always gets stinking when there's trouble. Good evening, Lucky. Good evening, my young friend. You come in? Oh, this key will only perform the duty for which nature designed it. You got it upside down. <laughs> so I have indeed. Bring in the milk. I'll get it. Thanks. Don't let that worry you. We, we must all stumble over Shakespeare once in our lives. Yeah, give me that. You put the rest of them in there. Where's the Mick? Is he out? Yeah, yes, he's, he's out all right, but I don't know how long he's going to stay out. 
Trouble, I knew it. Yeah, n nothing but trouble. Say, who, who, who's your young friend? Name's Johnny. Johnny? Johnny what? Apollo. Johnny Apollo. Apollo, huh? Non simpler actum tender to Apollo. Come on, talk English. Where's the Mick? Well, I've been looking for him everywhere. Well, you're not going to find him in a bottle. Well, maybe, maybe you can find him. I can try. Well, if you do, bring him here. Hey, 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 wait. What does your friend want? I don't know. Found him outside. So long, Johnny. Good luck. Lucky. I came to you for legal advice. In trouble? Well, not exactly. But I have a friend who is. He's in state prison. I want to get him a new trial or arrange about parole or something. Well, what's the rap? Embezzlement. Embezzlement? It's pretty hard to get a new trial on embezzlement. When you embezzle money, you sign a lot of papers and convict yourself. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Now, if it was plain or fancy crime, why, come to me. Don't worry if that carpet could walk in his stagger. Well, what about a parole? Money. Well, I, I've got about $65. You got what? $65. Uh, go away, young man, and don't bother us. We're not amused. But, sir... Step the one foot was in that circle, and on thy head, even it wore a crown, I'd launch the curse of Rome. What did you say, sir? Shh. I'm teaching my elephant Shakespeare now. Don't move, and they won't bother you. Wake up. Come on, wake up. What's wrong? Oh, Mickey. I said, what's wrong? Police got Bates. Where they got him? State Street. Drunken vagrancy. Well, I can't show up down there in your... Who are you? He's an old friend of mine, a very old friend, Johnny. You want to make a hundred bucks? Well, I'd like to do him a favor, if that's what you mean. Get down to the State Street Jail and spring a guy named John Bates. Spring? Go his bail. Get him out, that's what I mean, and bring him here. No, wait a minute. Bring him to the Paradise Club right across the street. Huh. Yes, sir. Hey, wait. Here. What do I want with these? Maybe Bates won't want to come with you, so... he might have to insist. All right, I don't think I'll need him. No, take him with you anyway. You might want to get weight. Yes, sir. I declare. Say, who put up bail for me? Mickey Dwyer. He wants to see you. 
tell him I'm leaving for Detroit. Now, wait a minute. I said Dwyer wants to see you. You can't run out on his bail. I'll uh, send it to him. No, you don't. You're coming with me. sad song because that's the way I felt then. <laughs> Up, it cost me ten grand to square myself. Now, I don't mind about the money. But this time, if they'd have gotten one thing out of you, I go back to now, the Mickey. Now, Mickey. Can't you get it through your hop head that I'm on parole and I'm not in the clear? But I didn't say a word. No. You don't know whether you said anything or not. Sit down and shut up. Okay, Mickey. Thanks for the trouble. No trouble at all. Guys who cause me trouble got to get hurt. <laughs> Listen, you're not talking to the local talent. I said sit down and shut up. Uh, Mr. Dwyer, that bail was $200. This is what's left. Keep it. You did what I told you. I like guys who do what I tell them. This is a friend of mine I want you to meet. Johnny uh, Apollo. Yeah, Johnny Apollo. Hi, boss. Hi, and he's no mug like you mugs. This is Lucky. Yeah, we met up at Brennan's. Hey. It's quite an eye you're getting. Harry, get some beefsteak, the best in the house. Okay. You know the judge? Here, grab a chair. Thanks. I don't know how long you've known him, but I want to tell you something. There's the sweetest no good drunk that ever lived. He never missed a single visitor's day the whole time I was in the pen, did you? And he took my mother, God bless her, 15 miles to Mass every Sunday. If I ever get married, he's gonna be my best man. I think that calls for a round. Hey, uh, Lucky. Thanks. Here's to you, old timer. Mickey, I, uh... I couldn't find any steak, just chops and liver. So one of you guys didn't starve to death while I was in hock. Come on with me, Jerry. You know, when I was a kid, I blew one of these things open thinking it was a safe. <laughs> Yeah. 
If there's anything better than scotch than milk, it's buttermilk. Hey. See those holes? Yeah. Them's bullet holes. Hmm. Yeah. Marty the drummer emptied his gun into me before I got mine out. I only shot him once, right between the eyes. Here, feel. Feel that lump? Know what that is? Hmm? It's a slug from a 38. Look, I got another one. See that? <laughs> I got six in me. Got a regular collection. They called me Mickey, the walking paperweight. <laughs> I thought they ever bother you? Yeah, when it rains, someday I'm going back up to state prison and have them taken out. It's a nice, cheerful place for an operation. Well, you see, the prison doc's a friend of mine. He took care of me when I got shot. He didn't take the slugs out then because I caught pneumonia. I have a friend up there, too. Who hasn't? What's his name? Robert Kane. Pops Kane, old man Moneybags. Yeah, that's the one. Why, sure, I knew him well. Say, now, there is the grandest guy that ever lived. You'd never know he was a millionaire. And he was the only con in the joint who didn't claim he'd been framed. He wouldn't take anything soft. No, he goes to work in a boiler plant, you know, with one of those pneumatic drills. They chew your head off, you know, and they leave your, your hands as raw as that piece of steak there. You never heard a squawk out of him. Mm -mm. He'd just wrap a rag around his dukes and go to it again. <laughs> what a guy. He could take it. How well did you know him? He paid my way through college. Oh, I bet you went first class. Yes, I did. What are you doing now, Johnny? Oh, just looking for a job, that's all. So I can pay him back. Uh, you wouldn't want to be paid back. I'd like to anyway. Well, you quit worrying. You got a job. You're working for me. Now, stick that stake in your eye and come on.
Nick seems pretty fond of our young friend, doesn't he? You think the kid will reform the mix? Or vice versa. How'd you do? Not bad. Look at all this. I put the guy in business, and now he doesn't want to cut me in. Isn't there something you generally do about that? The guy's married to my sister. What can I do? Hey, Paul. Hi, Paul. Hello, Mickey. Glad to see you. I want you to meet a friend of mine. This is Johnny Apollo. Johnny, shake hands with my brother-in-law. Oh, hello. How are you? Always glad to meet a friend of Mickey's. Now, just make yourself at home. Come in anytime. I'll see you later, Mickey. That's him. That's the guy. He thinks he's the big shot. My sister wasn't so daffy about him, I'd like to shove his teeth right down his throat. Would you really like a cut in this place? Well, naturally, a guy gets a little sentimental about such things. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna stick this whole one on a dog in the next race that can't lose. At Jamaica, the seventh race. They're running. Coming by the stand for the first time, it's Anaconda out in front by a length. Slip Realm is second by a half. And French Pete. At the corner, it's Anaconda by four lengths. Slip Realm by a half. French Pete by two lengths, and Marimba. Around the far turn, it's Anaconda by five lengths. Marimba moving into second by a head. French Pete is third by two lengths, and Slippery Elm. Coming down the stretch, it's Anaconda and Marimba, and it's going to be a driving finish. Slippery Elm. Marimba's moving out in front and pulling away. Anaconda goes to the whip. French Pete is With holding Slippery back. Elm. Coming up to the line of finish, it's Marimba by three lengths, Anaconda by a half. And French Pete. Where's Slippery Elm? Slippery Elm folded in the stretch. <laughs> and the finish for Rimba. <laughs> Come on, Dad, help me figure out something. I know. Johnny's gonna take you home. But... We'll talk about that later. Come on, Judge, you and I got some business. Now, where is dear brother Paul? <laughs> what did you wish that time? What time? Remember the robin? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what did you wish? I wish that Mickey would get out of jail. It's the one thing I wanted most then. Now, what did you wish? Oh, I can guess. You wish that friend of yours is out, too. That rich guy. What are you talking about? You're not fooling me. Mickey told me all about you and him. Yeah, that's what I wished. I guess that's what I want most of all. Is that why you're playing around with Mickey? Listen, Johnny, I don't know how bad you want it, but don't pay too much for it. What is this, a sermon? I feel sort of responsible for you. For me? Yeah. Till you rang that doorbell at Brennan's that night, you'd never done a dishonest thing in your life. Oh, you might be able to fool Mickey, but you can't fool me in. I can take care of myself. Yeah, a lot of people think that, and they wind up with the state taking care of them. I started out to do something, and I'm gonna do it. Some people get too smart for themselves. 
Oh, Johnny, I don't mean to butt in. All right. You haven't. Let's cut it out. I hate fights. I didn't know we'd had one. Felt like one. But I forgive you. Come on, let's make up. Kiss me if you want to. and I was very glad to get it. You're looking well. Perhaps it's the diet and the regular hours. I had really forgotten what it meant to have an appetite. You remember how I used to hate lima beans? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I get them after a hard day's work, I love them. Being in prison has its compensations, I suppose. Well, what are they... What have they got you doing now? Oh, I'm in the boiler shop. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now that I've won my calluses, I, they tell me I'm in line for promotion. <laughs> Foreman. Oh. <laughs> I always knew you'd make good. <laughs> well, tell me about yourself. Oh, there isn't much to tell. I've taken your advice and grown up. I think it was all your friends that helped me do that. I bet I have more friends in here than I have on the outside. You'd win that bet. You got a job? Yes. What are you doing? Well, I... One minute. One minute. Maybe I better get to the good news quickly. How would you like to get a parole? Parole? Why, McLaughlin said I wasn't eligible yet. No, but this isn't McLaughlin. I've been working this out with, well, with some other friends of yours. You really think there's a chance? It's a good one. If it comes off, you'll be out of here in a few weeks. You're not joking. I can stand this place when I know I've got to stay here. But with the hope of getting out. Then don't you worry. Everything's practically set. Sorry, Bob. I'll have to break it up. Goodbye. Goodbye. Mind if I give you some advice, Pop? No, go ahead. You've got a good record here, and you'll get plenty of time off for good behavior. Now, why don't you let nature take its course instead of playing around with a rat like that? What do you mean? You know what I mean. You were talking parole with Apollo, weren't you? Who's Apollo? Now, don't try to kid me. Johnny Apollo, Mickey Dwyer's front man. Oh, no, you're mistaken. No, I'm not. Didn't I see him with my own eyes come in here with the Mick? I know, he's... Uh... As big a rat as Dwyer, only smoother. Come on. There's only a guilty guy can score. Yeah, until the judge showed him those old contracts with his signature on them. That ought to be a lesson to both of you. Be careful what you sign. 
You know, you're gonna have enough dough to pay old man Kane back before you know it. Yeah. Me? I'm gonna put mine into an annuity. You know, in this business, a guy should always put something away for his old age. Hello, Lucky. Hello. Hello. Hey, Johnny. You know what holds that dress up? Yep. Now, don't go giving away any trade secrets. All right, what does? Whalebone. <laughs> Who told you? My old man. He must be quite a guy, your old man. He is. Yep. Sit down. There we are. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to run along. Good night. Night. Hand me that racing ball. Hey, how long would it take me to learn how to talk English? Why? I was just asking. I want to see Mr. Robert Kane, please. Well, who shall I say wants to see him? His son. Who did you say you wanted to see? Mr. Robert Kane. I'm his son. Well, Mr. Kane says he has no son. Ringside 
time she sings that song. Hiya, Mickey. Hiya, Sergeant. Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Remember how I used to be all crippled up with arthritis? Well, I just had a couple of teeth pulled, and I never felt better. You didn't come around here to tell us about your arthritis. No. As a matter of fact, I didn't. I've got a little present for you, Mickey. Yeah. What's that? Oh, here, Johnny. You can take a look for yourself. I've got one for you, too. I, I've got the car outside. I don't want to embarrass you boys, so I'll just wait out there for you. And uh, don't be too long. You're pretty smart Flatfoot, aren't you? Well, well, everybody's here. Yeah, you can come along with Mickey. What is all this? What do you think it is? We're pinched. Come here. Get a hold of Brennan quick. Tell him to get down to headquarters. We'll need a habeas corpus. Say, isn't there enough trouble already without you getting plastered? Mick's been in tighter spots than this before. I know, but I'm not worried about the Mick. Yes, I know, but he who dances with the devil must pay somebody. I, I forget who. What do you mean by that? I mean that Johnny's name has been signed to a lot of checks, and they're not made payable to the community chest. Since when has given money a crime? since the new grand jury's been sworn in. What'll happen to him if they send him up? Well, he'll probably get about five years and acquire a taste for hardtack and chicory. I don't mean that. I mean what's gonna happen to him inside. Of all things, not to have been born is best. Oh, if I could only get my hands on the first guy that'd call me lucky. No, it's all right for me to say that, but not for you. You're young and you're beautiful. Besides, you're in love. Who says I'm in love? You do. Every time you open your mouth. He is swell. Swell is hardly the word to describe, Johnny. Look. We gotta find some way to help him. We can't help him. Only one man can. The man who hurt him. His father. His father? Yes, Robert Kane. Say, is there anything you don't know? Well, I could figure that one out even when I was drunk. Well, let me see. Kane comes up for parole pretty soon. It shouldn't be difficult to get them together. Uh, that don't make sense to me. How can we get them together if he's being paroled and Johnny goes up? Maybe Johnny doesn't go up. You mean... You mean you might be able to fix it? I think so. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be busy. Okay. Lucky. You're not getting into anything over your head, are you? No, honest. I'm old enough to know when I'm not playing in my own league. Well, anybody that plays ball in your league has got to play a pretty fair brand of ball. A scram.
Hello, Mickey. This joint smells like a brewery. You getting ready to go on a bat? No. Hey, what do you got there? Some of your papers. What are you going to do with them? Well, why take chances at a time like this? I'm going to put them in the bank. Oh. Yeah, that's a good idea. That's what I thought. So long, Judge. So long. Just a fun. Why don't you tell him? How badly do you want Mickey Dwyer? Enough. Would you be interested in making a deal? There's a dictaphone in this office, Mr. Brennan. Well, I've got to take chances if I want to get him off. I've got the records on every one of his gang. Now, if you're willing to drop the charges against Dwyer, I'll help you build up a case against the rest of his men that'll send them up for 20 years. I'm not interested in them. How about Johnny Apollo? Don't you want him? No. I want Dwyer. Well, I'm sorry I took up so much of your time. I thought you might possibly be interested in making a deal of some sort. Now, if you'd come in here and ask me if I'd be willing to drop my charges against Apollo for evidence on Dwyer. Well, I'm Dwyer's attorney. You're not suggesting that I cross him, are you? Oh, I'm not suggesting anything. I'm merely giving you the only basis on which I'd be willing to make a deal. Well, supposing I do cross him. What do I get out of it? My promise that the beneficiary in your deal, whoever he is, will not be brought to trial. Whatever arrangements you make with him, of course, is none of my business. Well, Apollo can't pay me the money that Dwyer can. That's your worry. I have nothing to add to what I've already said. Well, a half a loaf is better than none. You've made a deal. There's his deposit slips, his bank book, and his private calling list in the police department. I think you'll find everything there you need. And Apollo goes free. I'll be seeing it.
finally caught up with him. Where? Anderson's Turkish bath sobering up. Tell him to keep that dance going for 10 minutes longer. Me a moment, Mr. Apollo. Haven't you guys got any sense of decency? That's all right, Mickey. I'll go along. You know who I am? I think so. Apollo, we want to know if you can tell us where Mickey Dwyer was between 11 and 11, 15, night before last. Night before last? Oh, he was with me. The whole time? Yeah. You'd swear to that? Certainly I'd swear to it. You're all alike. You'd swear your life away to alibi a rat like Dwyer. Now, wait a minute. If you want to call him a rat, bring him in here and tell him to his face. If you're talking to me, talk to me and leave my friends out of it. I'm talking to you because you're his alibi. Alibi for what? For murdering Brennan. Why should he kill his best friend? I suppose you don't know that Brennan was getting ready to sell out wire. It's awfully easy to slander a dead man. I suppose you weren't in on the same deal. I don't know what you're talking about. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. Look, I'm your friend. You don't want to go to jail. You tell me the truth about Brennan's death and I'll drop my charges against you. Why should I fall for that? If I'm going up, all right, I'm going up. I'm not going to perjure myself so you can frame Dwyer. It's your last chance. Are you with us or are you with Dwyer? I'm with Dwyer. Because he's frankly out for himself and he admits it. There are a lot of people that are a lot cheaper than Dwyer. All right. Get out. I'm getting out. I need fresh air anyway. Someday one of those people will tell me something that remotely resembles the truth. I'm going to drop dead of the shock. If Apollo sticks to his story, you'll never get Dwyer for murder. No, but... Thanks to Brennan, we got enough on him to send him up for life already. What about Apollo? Do we let him go? No, he's had his chance. Well, we made a deal. We owe it to Brennan. To Brennan, not Apollo. You can't pay a debt to a dead man. He was trying to help us. Help us? Why? He thought we were in love. Can you beat it? That's what you think. But the perfect prison ain't been built yet. Now get this. The last time I was up, I noticed the prison laundry's got an outside gate. You see here? There's your street. Mm -hmm. now, every night at 8.30, they open that gate. They let the laundry trucks in. 
And one night, we'll be rolling out right along with him. Yeah, but they know that's a weak spot as well as we do. It's going to be just as hard to get into the laundry as it is to get out of jail. Oh, so, all right. So once we get in the laundry, as good as out, ain't we? Huh? Sure. Now, I think I got this thing licked. You see that ventilating system? Three-foot tubes, plenty of room. Look. Say, Mickey, you just one leads from the laundry into the library. What do you think I've been telling you? Now, get this. It's a cinch to get in the prison library any night after chow. They know I'm nuts about reading. Johnny's all broken out with education. Now, what, this uh, what, what about me? Well, what? you can kid him along. Now, get this. Come here, Joe. That gate opens at 8.30 sharp. We'll be in the laundry right on time. And one of those trucks will be ours. Yeah, but how do we get it? How do we get it? You hijack one up the road. You drive in a gate when the others do. If you ask me, you don't need to arrange no break. You beat this rap easy. Look, will you let me worry about that and keep your trap shut? Joe, what you got to worry about is time. Everything's got to go off like that. What you doing, playing games? Oh, hello, Johnny. Hello, Mickey. Lucky. Hello, hello Johnny. Huh? Say, if you're through with these blueprints, I got to get them back before somebody misses them. We're all through. OK, I'll drop these off, and I'll meet you at the courthouse. Check. Johnny. Are you in on this break? Yeah. What for? Because I don't figure on spending the best years of my life in prison. If they send you up at all, it'll just be for three or four years. That's too much. I've seen what a couple of years can do to one man. I'm not going to let the same thing happen to me. You ought to be thinking about what'll happen to you if you get away with it. Listen, when I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Look, he's using you, Johnny, just using you. Now, get this through your head. Mickey's not running me, and neither are you. I'm sorry, Lucky. It's okay. Picking on you of all people. Forget it, will you? Haven't you caused enough trouble already? Why don't you let the kid alone? It's time you guys went down to the courthouse. I'll be along later. Uh, don't be too much later. Now, what's eating you? You know it's the truth. You're using him. All right, what if I am? From now on, I'm not worrying about anybody but Mickey Dwyer, see? If he can be useful to me, I'll use him, or you, or anybody. What's it to you, anyway? It's plenty to me. You're stuck on a kid, ain't you? What if I am? Maybe I ought to be annoyed, but I'm not. He's got too much class for a cheap dame like you. You'll come crawling back. Not after Brennan. What about Brennan? Do I look dumb? Brennan's trying to get Johnny off. The DA's got new evidence on Mickey Dwyer, and Brennan gets bumped off. I suppose that's a coincidence. Was Johnny in on that deal? No, but I was. You were? Yes, I was. Why don't you stick an ice pick on me? Well, you dirty little double crossing. <laughs> you thinking of using your information? Not the way you think. Your personal effects in the dressing room. Wally! Leave your clothes and personal effects in the dressing room. 38! What's your name? Bates. First name. Harry. Former occupation. I'm an engraver.
Name, please. Apollo. Johnny. Your real name? I haven't any. Former occupation? Embezzler. Second generation. Name, please. Mr. Barry? Yes. Won't you sit down? I don't think I've ever had the pleasure. I'm a friend of Johnny Apollo's. I'm not interested in any friends of his. I know he's your son, Mr. Kane. He seems to have forgotten it. He never forgot. He put his soul on Hawk to try and get you out of here. That's how he got mixed up with Dwyer. Are you asking me to believe this? I was there the first time he came down to see a shady lawyer to try and swing a parole for you. He kept getting in deeper and deeper. All the time, he never had a wrong thought in his head. What kind of a father do you call yourself, anyway? What's all this got to do with you? I think that I love him more than you do. Only I can't stop him from making a mess out of his life, and you can. Perhaps I can make this a little easier for you. I think he means just as much to me as he does to you. Might be stupid to try and talk in here, but there's something I must tell you. Well, there are no secrets in jail. I've got to take a chance. What I'm telling you is between us. If you can't do anything about it, just forget it. There's gonna be a jailbreak tonight, and Johnny's in on it. Break? How do you know? I've known it all along. I didn't know when until today. They're going through the library. Library? To get to the laundry where a truck will be waiting. When? Tonight between 8 and 8.30. Then they're going out through the ventilating system. Who's they? Johnny and Mickey Dwyer and some other guy. Johnny thinks that the Mick is his best friend because he's never let him down. But he doesn't know that the Mick had a lot of other friends, too. Brennan was one. Was that the lawyer? He was killed by Mickey Dwyer just because he was trying to help Johnny. You tell him that. Tell him that Lucky told you. He'll know it's the truth. Did you say he said he? There's still time enough to stop him. You've got to. Listen, Mr. Kane. If he gets away with it, He'll have to go and hide, and, and I'll have him for the rest of his life, because I'll go and hide with him. If you stop him, you'll have him. I'll never see him again, and I'm telling you to stop him. Ah, this cockeyed handkerchief has lipstick all over. There's no reason why you shouldn't see him again. I'm leaving town. Where to? As far as 20 bucks and a mink coat will take me.
Sit down there, Pop, and you won't get hurt. Here's your gas. Wait a minute. I've caused you enough harm already. But this is one thing I'm not going to let you do. You're not going to get out of here. Listen to me. I've listened to you once too often. If you go through with this, you're finished. It's a little late to think of that, isn't it? I'm not going to stand by and see you throw your life away. What's the matter? Can't you take it? Not this. You're not going. Now, wait a minute. Don't make me do anything that I'll be sorry for. Just keep out of my way. Come on. Don't go with him. He'll cross you the same as he crossed Brennan. He killed Brennan. Your best friend. That's the kind of a man you're he is. You're crazy. It's the truth. Lucky told me. Go on, Mickey. Tell him. Tell him the truth. Tell him you killed Brennan. I thought I told you to sit down. Come on, Johnny. Hurry up. There's a jailbreak. It's starting in the lap. Shut Pop King while he was phoning. What are his chances, Doctor? He's been unconscious practically all the time. He keeps murmuring about his son. Yes, Kane has a son. We look him up and notify him. Work on Apollo. Find out where they got those guns and how. As long as I've been here, every time they've had an execution, it's made me sick to my stomach. But if Cain dies, I'd be willing to pull the switch on Apollo myself. Let me out of here. Let me out of here! I've got to get to my father. I tell you that I'm... Shut up! 
Ain't no one can hear you out here but me, and I'm deep. Mind you, the warden wants to see it. Is this the man? Yes, sir. Is my father all right? Tell him your name, Johnny. Your real name. Robert Kane, Jr. Is he going to live? Get me Dr. Brown. If you're Kane's son, why did you shoot him? I didn't. Hello, doctor. Is Kane conscious? I want to see him. Long enough to make an identification, and to answer one question. Yes, right away. We'll go over to the hospital. Just wait here. He'll be all right, Johnny. Don't mind if I call you Johnny. That's the way I'll always know you. All right, but don't be too long. Dead. Dead. Hello. All right. <laughs> Hello, God, it's good to see you. Uh, you're looking fine. I guess those lima beans agreed with me, too, huh? <laughs> Did you do what I asked you? Yes. Lucky. Hello, Johnny. <laughs> Oh, 